By this point, you've probably seen our original ad for Thermal Grizzly's Carbonaut Pads. They're clean, peace of mind replacements for traditional thermal paste, and best of all, you'll never have to replace them. But did you also know that you can buy Carbonaut Pads in different sizes for various processors? They even make a giant 51 by 68 millimeter pad for Threadripper. I highly recommend Carbonaut Pads, and you can learn more by clicking the link below. All right, so this video is totally unscripted. It is totally not prepared for very well. I won't be cutting in and out. I won't be including crazy B-roll. I'm just gonna be sitting in front of the camera with a shotgun mic, so I apologize for the semi-trashy audio. Uh, and I'm gonna be explaining to you why the AIO positioning thing has been blown out of proportion and, uh, and, and why you should not be crusading uh, when you see a PC build that uses an AIO that is not in the optimal position. So there was a video released by, by Gamers Nexus, uh, which I think was uh, very well put together. I'm not disagreeing with anything that was said there. Uh, what I am disagreeing with are the comments from people who have apparently watched that video and taking things out of context uh, or, or just completely like pulled stuff out of thin air and used that video of his uh, as this the spearhead to kind of drive this notion home. So when it comes to AIO positioning, there is an optimal position, right? An optimal layout. There is a suboptimal layout, which isn't bad for the pump. And then there is a layout that is seriously bad for the pump, especially if the loop itself is not properly primed and if there are significantly larger air bubbles than there should be in the closed system. So to start with, an AIO has fluid in it, right? It's typically water-based. And the problem is you can't really get all of those air bubbles out. You, you, you can kind of fill the loop up as much as you can, but there's always going to be that small pocket of air that just doesn't escape. Now, this right here, positioning a radiator in such a manner, I'm trying to get this in camera, so that the radiator is on the bottom and the pump is up here, right? or, or any configuration in which the pump is higher than the radiator itself. Unless you have something else in the system that is higher than the pump, this is bad because all of the air in the system will rise, right? Air is less dense than water and in a closed system that air will find its way to the highest point in the closed system, which in this case is the pump, right? Does that need any more? I don't think it needs any more explaining. I think we all understand this one. Now, no one's arguing that this isn't good for the pump, for the life of the pump, we should say. Now, the one that really drives me insane, the one that I see so many people complaining about, and, and he, Steve himself has even said that people are taking this out of context. They aren't. They didn't understand what he was trying to say in the video. This configuration right here, this is the standard AIO layout. You could also, I like to wrap my tubes around this way. It just keeps things looking a bit more clean. And, and I apologize, I know it's not gonna look very uh, clean on video there, but uh, you get the idea. Where the radiator, let's say, is mounted up front and the pump is positioned in such a, such a way that uh, you know, it's maybe two thirds of the way up from the base of the radiator, but it is definitely not the highest point in the loop. In fact, in this configuration, the tubes are as high, if not higher, than the top of the radiator. Uh, so where, you, where would you expect air to collect in this configuration here? It's either gonna be at the top of the radiator or at the top, you know, somehow, depending on how thick these channels are, at the tops of the tubes if your tubing happens to run uh, in such a way that, you know, it's higher than everything else, which would be weird, but I'm sure it's happened once or twice. So in this configuration, the pump is not in any immediate danger because air bubbles, again, if any existed in the first place in the pump, when you turn your system on for the first time, that air will more than likely, assuming this chamber isn't very big, uh, will be pushed out of the pump, out of the block, uh, back through the radiator where it will collect on either side of the rad up top, assuming this is again the way that you have it set up. So the radiator is actually split down the middle, you can't really tell, but this chamber is usually sectioned off and that's to force water to flow through channels on one side, right, for that heat to be conducted or absorbed by the, uh, by the fins, which are typically aluminum in these AIOs, and then for those fins to then convect air or radiate air, we call them radiators, it's actually convection uh, to atmosphere, right? So, so that's what, uh, that's how a radiator works in a, in a very simple sense. And we use fans to accelerate that convection process. Uh, so that, that water will kind of work its way down one side. It'll collect at the base uh, here, which is again joined. And then it will flow back up to the other side, depending on which, which port is the inlet, which port is the outlet. Um, you'll, you'll have that circulation moving through. So the air water collect in 
the left or the right chamber, the top of the radiator. But again, if it's a very temporary shot of air through something, I mean, even when I'm building custom loop rigs, uh, there's a lot of air initially going through the pump. It's not gonna magically kill the pump right away. The reason why you don't want air running through the pump habitually is because the pump relies on the coolant, on the water-based solution, uh, typically with uh, inhibitors for, for galvanic corrosion and the sort because they combine copper and aluminum in these things. Uh, if, if you churn that water too much through the, through the loop, uh, through, the, through the pump, then the pump will overheat. So because it's not being lubricated by the water as much as it should be, uh, it will run too hot, potentially overspool and die. So I've got the video from Gamers Nexus in question up right now. We're gonna play the section that I think is being misconstrued the most. You'll see this is a very specific scenario in which barbs up is bad. You'll see why. It, it's it, You can actually see it in the video and, and Steve actually addresses this at one point as well. I think people have been kind of glossed over it. So here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and play it and uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of walk through it. There's that it then shows installed incorrectly when marketing its cases. Thanks to manufacturers doing this because it looks pretty and thanks to power supply shrouds requiring this configuration in many instances, people often mount their coolers tubes up. We always try to point them tubes down if possible and if it doesn't fit that way, we mount it in the top of the case instead. In this one, we have to consider the location of the pump. The pump is likely to be about one and a half to two inches below the tank, which is a good thing. Which we is don't good. want the pump at the top of the That's loop okay. anyway. If the pump is sufficiently below, the pump will be filled, but air bubbles will occasionally get sucked through the outlet tube and into the pump. Depending on how That's filled the loop is. That's because the air accumulates right next to the barbs. This right but here. ideally, we'd have it flipped so that the air accumulates in the other tank that isn't attached to the barbs and the tubes. The air bubbles that get pulled through will circulate. But this is the reason a lot of users complain about that water trickling or gurgling or bubbling noise. This is really more about the noise than anything else in most instances. It, it does cause performance issues as well, but it's primarily a noise problem. A performance issue, it's a very, like, I know, Steve, I felt like he had to bring that up because it is possible, but it's it's a very, very rare thing. The loop would have to be so empty. It'd have to have such big air pockets in it uh, that that you would you would see a loss of circulation, essentially. Uh, but it's, it, it, it's more or less about noise here. And Steve says it. This is more about noise than anything else. If you hear the gurgling, it's because the air, the, the bubbles are churning up top on account of the fluid being pulled in through the intake barb and pushed out through the, uh, the little the outpour here on the other side. So what's happening, and he's showing you this in real time, the air bubbles on this side are being pulled in through this barb down to the pump, right? So the pump is experiencing pockets of air right, churning through the chamber. Then those pockets of air are being pushed back up because air naturally rises when in water, right? Air is a lot less dense than water. So those air pockets are gonna flow back up right into this side here. Now you can see this chamber is empty. I mean, there there is a, there's a lot of air in here. Uh, th this, I would say, is a poorly designed, or it, it, in the simplest of terms, a poorly filled radiator. The whole point is to have a closed system that is as you know, little exposed to air as possible because air is inefficient in such a system. So if you've complained about pump noise, check for this orientation. You can also get pump wine on some pumps when air is sucked through them, and that might last past the period of the air getting pulled through. In theory, a small amount of air won't get pulled through because it's not a high enough speed to get sucked into the tubes. But as the air cavity grows, once it gets down to where the barb actually connects to the tank, it can produce that bubbling and trickling noise that you sometimes hear as the air cycles through the loop. Fine. Right, but that's, right, again, specific to the AIO. So if the AIO is not filled properly and both of those air pocket levels extend down into at least where that first barb is, it's pulling in that fluid to the pump, that's when you have uh, that, that repetitive problem. And if you hear the pump churning, right, when you first turn it on, right, that, that's the air that's stuck either from shipping uh, or just the orientation it was laying on your desk, that's the air that either migrated into the pump to begin with or is in that kind of intake uh, little chamber there on the radiator. It's moving through the pump to begin with, but over time, that closed system will equalize. And usually it only takes 
a, a few seconds to maybe a few minutes. Now, if in the upright position with the pump below the highest point in the rad, you still hear churning and gurgling after maybe 20, 30 minutes, I'd be a little more concerned there. That would suggest that, again, the loop is not filled properly uh, and that some of those air bubbles are consistently being pulled through the pump and just circulating through the whole system over and over and over. That's not good, but that is a very, very rare thing. I have worked with AIOs since what 2014 2015 i've worked with dozens of them most of them have been in the stand-up config with the barbs up top and the blocks slightly below uh, slightly lower than the top of the radiator like steve said at least a few inches uh, and i have not had a single pump die even if you'd say they were hand selected right i know this is a very small sample size you can't just extrapolate across the entire industry here i'm just telling you from experience i've never had a problem even with noise actually i've never even had a noise problem although i know that it, it does exist uh, but it's not as common a thing as i think people are making it out to be and then they're taking the whole barb up thing and they're just saying well barb up is bad period it's bad period no matter what when in fact it's only bad if the aio wasn't designed properly to begin with or more specifically wasn't filled up the way that it should have been to begin with but anyway uh, i'm just I'm, I'm tired of seeing comments uh, in regards to aio positioning where, and it's, it's, it's perfectly fine if you wanna say, well, the way you've got your AIO set up, um, it's gonna be a bit loud. Okay, usually the fans run louder than any gurgling you'll hear up top. Now, again, there are certain AIOs where we would expect that to be much worse, and that could potentially be the loudest thing around. Uh, but performance-wise, and especially when seen in the context of the life of the pump, um, that layout, this conventional sort of like front-mounted config is not bad. Um, and the, again, the only thing you're gonna deal with is the gurgle, and that's only in a few radiators. I haven't run into that really ever. I've never noticed like, oh, that's a lot of uh, a lot of air being you know collected and and gurgled in the top of the radio. I've just never noticed that. It's not something that I've ever run into. I think that's uh, again something that people are blowing a bit out of proportion. I didn't get the vibe that, that you know that that was being done in, in Steve's video. It's not what I'm trying to say. Uh, again, I, I think that that video was was put together very well. I think that it needed to be made. It was necessary. But I also think that it's important that people don't stretch the truth or stretch the data in such a way that they you know have they, they create this narrative about AIO layouts that's not true. Um, you cannot you cannot say that this is not ideal for the pump because the pump is not the highest point in the loop. You cannot force air, especially with how weak these pumps are. Most of these pumps are manufactured by Asatec. Uh, and they're they're relatively weak when you compare it to a, a laying like d5 pump these are significantly weaker um the, the closed system is significantly smaller typically than than a traditional custom loop so to speak with with uh, much wider tubing very large reservoirs things of that sort you get you need you know uh, a lot more pump head to push that amount of fluid uh but I'm just, I'm just sick of it. It is just so annoying because that, this was never an issue until that video was made. And now because people are taking that video out of context, all of a sudden it's just being, people are just getting destroyed in comment sections over this crap. It's frankly garbage and it's annoying. And I'm sorry if I'm coming across a bit snobby, a bit uh, moody. I'm sure that's how some of you will We'll construe this. I wouldn't be surprised. It's how the internet is. But th those of you who know me, you know that it's just after a while, I, I can only take so much before something needs to be said. And hopefully this video explains why what some of you are saying is not true. Um, it just just for very elementary fluid dynamics uh, perspectives. You, you just, you're not going to, you know, force air, which is significantly less dense than water, down. It just doesn't make any sense unless you have a super powerful pump at which point you've got other things to worry about because uh, I bet you these these connections here the connections on the pump side or uh, on the uh, block side will, will fail much faster than uh, than, than anything else. So yeah um, <laughs> before I break anything I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm sorry that this video had to be made. Um, I'm not expecting too much to, to come of it. Hopefully this clears things up. If anyone is seen just spewing the crap about how a standard front-mounted AIO is, is incorrect uh, because that could damage the pump, please show them this video. Um, I feel like if you show them Steve's video, all that you're gonna end up doing, I mean, Steve's video is great, by all means, share that video. But um, I feel like if you show people Steve's video who already believe what they believe by watching Steve's video, that's not really gonna do them any good because you're just gonna end up like, you know, reaffirming their initial position, which is incorrect based on the information in said video, but that's just how the internet works. People take things, uh, 
uh, too far or they, they, they take things out of context and it just it, it's very troublesome when you're in the media and you're subjected to that that sort of like slanted view of reality and it, it's like a cluster too because so many people will kind of gang up on you at the same time and tell you how it's wrong because I saw it on another channel or another video. Again, the video is great, but uh, people are, are stretching the truth and taking that information and just twisting it in ways that they shouldn't. So uh, yeah, pump, highest point in the loop, that's bad, okay? All the air pockets are gonna rise to that highest point, which would be the pump, the block. And if that pump chamber, that, that, that the chamber under the block is very small, then you're kind of forcing those bubbles to kind of circulate through the pump or gather at least where the pump is circulating fluid uh, and that's not good. Even if a, a, a small section of the pump, of, of the pump blades, um, is exposed to those air bubbles that could dramatically shorten the lifespan of said pump. So that's why you don't want it, you know, in this config here where the pump is highest. Uh, that, that, that's not ideal, wouldn't recommend that and I will try to avoid that in the future. If I've ever done that in the past, I apologize. If maybe I just couldn't get around it, maybe the, the case required pump assembly in this way or AIO layout this way. But uh, whenever I mount a radiator up front, don't freak out, okay? Sure, it's a tad bit risky when seen in the context of like audio, like like how loud it is, um, just, just sheer sound produced by the AIO. But um, I've been doing this for years and I know plenty of others who have as well, including possibly you, and you probably haven't noticed any issues and it's because it's not really an issue for the pump. Might run a bit louder, pump will be fine. Thank you guys for watching this one, thumbs up. Click the subscribe button, leave a comment, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.